Here she is, the sacred River Lee, subject of today's walk. How are you? It's a frosty Sunday morning. It's like 5 to 10 a.m. When I woke up this morning, all the, the rooftops and the cars were covered in a thick coating of ice. I thought, ooh, this is a good idea today. So I've really rugged up. In fact, I've rugged up too much. I hope you're all doing okay in these strange times. It's a great time to come and pay homage to the sacred River Lee and walk the stretch of the Lee from here in Hackney Wick, on the Hackney Leighton border really, and follow it down to its confluence with the Thames. This section of the river here, as we pass into the edge of the uh, Queen Elizabeth II London Olympic Park, it's crisscrossed with these bridges carrying the east-west roads. This is a historic borderland. If you've watched any of my previous River Lee or Lee Valley videos, you'll have heard me go on ad nauseum how this was once the boundary between the Dane law and Wessex law, or rather English law. Some people dispute that the Dane law came down this far, but that's always what I've read. And also later on, obviously, it became the border between Middlesex on the west and Essex on the east. And now it's the border between various London boroughs, either Hackney and Wolfham Forest, or Hackney and Newham. I think we're in Newham at this stage, as we coming into the Olympic Park. I actually quite like what they've done with the river here. It's one of the best things in the Olympic Park. I've had mixed feelings about the Olympic Park over the years, but uh, this bit of it is quite beautiful. On the other side of that bank there, you have what was once the, uh, the Olympic Broadcast Centre, now it's here east. And before that, I believe it was the site of the, of the Hackney Stadium, the Hackney Wick Stadium. I'll, um, I'll post some links below to my other videos where I walk around the Olympic Park and also the other parts of the, of the River Lee further up to Hartford. And I've made a number of videos around the Lower Lee, around uh, the marshes, Walthamstow Marshes, Leighton Marshes, the Walthamstow Waterworks, Tottenham Marshes, all through there. I haven't actually made a video of a continuous walk from, uh, from sort of Rockholt Road, Eastway, down to um, the confluence of the Lee and the Thames. That's why I wanted to do it today in one continuous walk. I could have done it along the navigation. I don't know some of you thought uh, had requested that walk. But uh, I'd like to do a mixture of the both, and I love the way that we, we see the meandering course of the old Lee working its way through the Olympic Park to make its confluence with the Hackney Cut, and then we'll continue along the Lee as it becomes the Bow Creek, in fact, I believe, on a lot of the old maps. But it's a fascinating story to tell. The story of London, the story of East London, the, uh, the story of ourselves. <laughs> they incorporated these kind of marshy pools into the landscaping of the Olympic Park after the Games. So this bridge here is finally open. And there has been one of my gripes about the Olympic Park. So many of the footpaths are closed off and you can't access various things, but here we go. You've got this quite lovely little lagoon, I guess you could call it here. But uh, this was the subject of a news story in The Guardian in the summer. This is where there's been sewage being discharged into this water here, which has then been flowing into the River Lee. It's quite scandalous, really, that it's been allowed to happen. to cross over onto the western bank 
of the uh, of the River Lee. Otherwise, we're going to have to start going around the Bowback Rivers. I'm just going to go up here onto Westfield Avenue and cross the river to the uh, to the West Bank. And this is the first of the Bowback Rivers that we encounter. Pretty sure this is the Waterworks River. You can see it there running past the Aquatic Centre and what I believe is called uh, East Bank, a new kind of cultural quarter they're building here. And beneath these shiny bridges we have the Carpenter's Road lock here. And there's some information here about the restoration of the lock. Here it is in 1934. Mainly designed to control floods. And then between 1669, the lock fell into disrepair. It got kind of silted up and stuff. And then it all got kind of done up for the Olympics. If you look at the, uh, the 1893 Ordnance Survey map of this area, which isn't written that long ago, if you think about it, in the grander scheme of things. This was all marshland, open marshland. What well, there was here, roughly where the Olympic Stadium is in this ground here, there was a steam bone works, a steam bone works. There were lots of kind of noxious trades along the Lee, chemical works, and various other things that were encountered along the way, and bone works as well were a real feature around Stratford particularly. And here we have the City Mill River, another of the Bowback Rivers. Various things were found in these rivers during the work for the Olympics. Somebody told me once that uh, among the finds were a number of exploded safes that had been dumped in the river. <laughs> of course, at one point, they found the Euston Arch dumped in the River Lee down here at Stratford. The glorious Euston Arch, which is an absolute travesty, isn't it? I wonder what else is lurking down there. I like to think there's votive offerings made in the, in the days of pagan times, Saxon days, maybe when the, the Vikings were coming up here in their longships and were confronted by Alfred the Great. What we are going to be confronted with is the fact that we need to get over back to the uh, to the eastern side of the river I think I might need to go up this bridge behind me I've not actually walked along this path so I'm tempted to go along here but what should we do I want to find the Pudding Mill River and that's on the other side I've kind of doubled back on myself I'm going to cross this wonderful old iron bridge that crosses the, the city mill and takes me back onto the east bank just now Walking beneath the, uh, the London Stadium, the Olympic Stadium, now home to West Ham United. And even by 1914, you're starting to see this area become industrialised, but even so, it's still pretty spacious and marshy. There was a, a timber yard here, but not a great deal else. And there's some wonderful stories on the comment section of my most recent Olympic Park video, which talked about various things here. There were army camps here. I think there was an isolation hospital here. Even after the war, it was still pretty kind of a debatable landscape. I think that's ice still on the surface of the river here. So this little uh, inlet here, just off the Lee running to the east and the south is, I think, all that remains of the Pudding Mill River. I think it is here. It's a little water course that was filled in during the building of the stadium, which sits right on top of it. So that's an interesting thought that when you're in the Olympic Stadium, it's sat right on top of a river. Coming up to the Hackney Cut now, the Lee Navigation. 
I think these are sewage pipes going to the old Ford pumping station. And here's the Greenway, which is built on top of Bazalgette sewer and goes down to the treatment works, the sewage treatment works down in Beckton. There we have Old Ford Lock. Of course the name isn't particularly cryptic here, the Old Ford, it's an old crossing point over the River Lee, where the Romans had a road that crossed the Lee, not far from here, or, well you can tell where it is, it's pretty much in line with Roman Road on the other side. And we're passing through Fish Island here. I've written about this area in my in my book that I have just finished. It needs an edit. I keep going on about it. Next time I mention it I want to be able to say it's published and you can buy it now. So I'm not going to repeat too much of that stuff in this video here but it's uh, it's interesting to see the amount of archaeology that was discovered around the Olympic Park dating back to the Bronze Age and further up the Lee Valley and all this change that you see happening in London at the moment which is feels like it's coming out of this development here coming out of the River Lee. The Lee's been a kind of a generator of change it feels like for thousands of years going right at least back to the Bronze Age. It's astonishing isn't it this watercourse here. Now at this point here I think somewhere here is where the Hackney Brook comes out into the Lee. Where the Hackney Brook makes its confluence to the Lee, a sacred spot. I think it's here somewhere. That is a walk I'm going to do shortly during this lockdown. I think it's over there. Is that it? is frozen here on the navigation. Wow. And now the lee starts to look a lot more industrial. Still a few of the old industrial units here beside the lee. Probably won't be here for much longer. It's amazing to think that really much of the modern world came into being just on the other side of the navigation here over in Hackney Wick. It's where plastic was invented. I think it was originally called Parkasine. Well, I think it was, a, it was an accident. They were trying to do waterproof coverings for tarpauling and some of it spilt on the floor and went hard and they thought, ooh, that looks useful. It's also where petrol was first synthesized, which is quite incredible. Petrol, plastic, but most importantly, Peppermint creams, Clarnico's peppermint creams. I'm not sure what happened here, but whatever it was, it doesn't look like it ended well. on the other side of the new concrete works there you can see the Bryant and May factory scene of the famous match girl strike Annie Besant and all that An important moment in British industrial history what I, um, what I really like about these these river walks these urban river walks these towpath walks is you feel like you're kind of slicing through the city it gives you a an easier passage through the built environment. We were walking through the roads here, as I did in the summer when I did a walk down through Bow. I'll link to that video as well below. It's not such an easy experience, particularly here as we come up to the, the Bow flyover. This road over here to the west as well. It's quite brutal walking conditions. It's down here by the river. You feel a sort of degree of insulation from it. So we have to cross the river once again to pass beneath the bow flyover on the uh, on the western bank.
Interestingly, here where the City Mill River rejoins the Lee, I saw it mentioned as the St Thomas's Creek on one of the maps they distributed in about 2006 2007 when they were updating local people on the progress of the works. But now it's gone back to being the City Mill River, so it's an interesting reference. I think it might have something to do with the wonderful photographer Peter Marshall. Whereas we had kind of timber works, and obviously chemical works and what have you, over in Hackney Wick, on the, on the south side of Stratford High Street here, you had more sort of noxious trades. There was a lime works just here. There were sawmills. There was a soap works, a blue works. What's a blue works? I don't know, no idea. And all manner of of other things as well. We'll see some more of it as we go down. Gas works, for example. Really heavily industrial. You can imagine what the smell would have been like down here. Apparently the smell around Stratford High Street was really quite toxic and unpleasant from all the various chemical trades and processing that went on. So it's here that there was the original, uh, the original Bow Bridge built by Queen Matilda, wife of Henry I. I think uh, the story is that she had uh, difficulty crossing the river here, or in fact maybe even fell into the river, so she demanded that a bridge be built across the River Lee here. Over there you can see a really big development that's been going on for ages. I mean, I think I remember seeing this go up, what, about 2013? It's a massive development around Sugar House Lane. I think I called it Ikea Town when I did a video over there in 2016, 2017, which I'll link to below. But it seems never-ending. It sort of seems to be taking shape now. Sugar House Lane was another industrial area. One of the trades over there was sign writing. There was a really lovely uh, sign writing workshop over there. And now it's all flat. <laughs> like everything else, everything is now flat. So we had all these little trades in industries. There are now apartment blocks, but I suppose we do need apartment blocks, right? We do need apartments. So, so we'll just cross that little bridge there over into another world, Three Mills Island. Isn't it magnificent? You'll have seen this on TV a number of times. It's used for sort of historical street scenes. There's a film studios here, Three Mills Studios. They made lots of various things you'll have seen. 28 Days Later, Tim Burton made a lot of his films down there. All sorts of stuff was made down here at Three Mills. I think these buildings here are the 18th century buildings that were built by the, the Huguenots who came over here and did uh, built mills for grinding corn. But there's been various uses on this site for the, for the mills that were here. At one point it was used for gunpowder. Uh, another point, it produced the, uh, the grain that fueled London's gin craze. But before that, there were mills recorded on this site back at least as far as the 12th century. Stratford Langthorne Abbey, which is not far away, acquired mills here at some point in the 12th century, so there would have been mills here before that. map here. Here we are. We're on a kind of little man-made island. You've got the Three Mills Wall River coming and joining it here. We carry on along the River Lee but then we have the Channel Sea River. You've got this network of the Bowback Rivers running around here. The Prescott Channel on the other side. Here we're going to be walking between two watercourses. To our left we have this tidal river here, Bow Creek, and over on the right 
We have the River Lee. And there's the gasometers. A still fairly inaccessible, inhospitable patch of land. Here we have the Channel Sea River. And you can see here the Bow Creek is a really powerful river here, isn't it? Particularly in the winter. It's tidal, so the water level does vary quite a bit, but it's a really strong flowing watercourse. The Lee, by comparison, is a gentle river, isn't it, here? Here at Bow Locks, the River Lee navigation branches off into the Limehouse Cut and makes its way down to the Limehouse Basin. That's a good walk to do. We're going to um, cross the bridge here at the Bow Locks and walk on the other side of the River Lee. And from this bridge here you can see how the Lee and the Bow Creek become conjoined at this part into one watercourse for the final stretch of the river down to make its confluence with the Thames. Just reading the final chapters of the latest Rivers of London story, the, the Peter Grant series by Ben Aranovich. Brilliant, brilliant, wonderful books. I've mentioned them many times before. And one of the things I love most about the books is that each of the, the rivers in London has a, has a deity, a living deity, a physical human that is walking amongst us. The gods and goddesses of the Rivers of London and the other tributaries of the River Thames. But I'm just wondering, I don't think I've seen any mention of the River Lee yet in any of those books. I'm sure some of you have, have read those books as well. Is the Lee omitted from the uh, Rivers of London books? Surely not. That would be a, an enormous oversight if so. <laughs> see worlds colliding beside the river. Some of these uh, industrial buildings, both old and maybe not so old, and the, the new buildings rising around them. That's the story of the river now. And this enormous building here is the Amazon Logistics Centre. If you live in London or near London, this is most likely where your parcel is coming from if you've ordered from Amazon. I really quite like this sculpture here, constructed of shopping trolleys retrieved from the river. Bearing in mind, you always find shopping trolleys in rivers wherever you go. I'm starting to think that maybe they're votive offerings to the river gods. Hello. Hello. We find this little patch of wasteland here on the other side. Slightly heartening in a way, which may seem strange, but it's like that there is a patch of land here which can resist development. Now we're coming up to one of the little treasures of this section of the Lee, Cody Dock. I have made a video about Cody Dock, but we're still pass through. So here's the old dock. They used to bring the coal up from the Thames and unload it here to take it to the to the gas and coke works to fuel the industries and the homes of the expanding East London. Now it's uh, home to a little artist community here. It's a pretty wonderful little space. Unfortunately for us, the, the riverbank isn't open for a section here. I think it's privately owned and they can't get permission to open the path up to the public. So we're going to have to go inland a little bit. This is great here. Here's some scenes from Cody Dock in the past from the 11th of June 1918. And these are women workers at the Gaslight and Coke Company. 
So if we go down here, down Bidder Street, I think we can find our way back to the riverbank. We're not far now from the, from the mouth of the River Lee, from the, the sacred point of confluence with the River Thames. And the location, once of a very special shipbuilding company that some of you already know what it is. I'll give you a clue, we uh, passed their new gaff earlier on. Wow. Come down here and see this whilst you can. Old industrial landscapes like this are a rare thing in London these days. How long before it's turned into flats? Now this is interesting. The legendary Bridge House 2. I believe this is a music venue, or the second incarnation of the Bridge House. I wonder what the relationship is between the Bridge House and the, and the more famous Iron Bridge Tavern, which was on East India Dock Road, the uh, pub of the legendary Queenie Watts. It's a great scene from Alfie. Shot in the Iron Bridge Tavern with Queenie Watts singing on the stage whilst a big brawl breaks out in the pub. She was actually the landlady of the, uh, the Iron Bridge Tavern, as well as being a singer and an actor. This is pretty desolate down here. This really is a disappearing London here. It's funny, I've never actually been down here. I remember someone telling me about it years ago, about eight years ago, one of, the, uh, one of the grandparents from the school run, he said, I'll take you down here and show you it. It's a, it's a disappearing world. It said it's the last of the old industrial East London. It's kind of incredible. So we turn off along this quite nicely signposted path here, which should lead us back to the River Lee, or more or less. So you can see where we are, you are here. And what we want to do is go underneath the flyover and then you've got the Bow Creek Ecology Park. Now, I think what's not on this map is there is a bridge here, you go. here it is here, a bridge onto City Island. So I think what I want to try and do is walk around the Ecology Park and then take the bridge onto City Island. The, the path underneath the, the Newham Way flyover. You get a view here of the brave new world that's been spawned around the mouth of the River Lee. I've never actually been to the Bow Ecology Park before. And here she is, the sacred River Lee, racing to make her confluence with the River Thames after the long journey down from Lee Grave. I wonder what the deity of the River Lee makes of all this development. I mean, who knows, they might be responsible for it. What is this glorious bit of brickwork a remnant of? It's almost like the remains of a temple complex, isn't it? See, this is where the Lee goes on a really huge meander. It's on both the right and the left of us. It goes around this peninsula here, which is now the Bow Creek Ecology Park. So the Bow Ecology Park here is built on the site of a former ironworks and shipbuilding company. And because of the location of where it is at the mouth of the River Lee, straddling the mouth of the River Lee on this meander here, I'm assuming this must be the site of the Thames Ironworks and Shipbuilding Company, which of course is where West Ham United started life as the football team of the Thames Ironworks and Shipbuilding Company. So in a way, actually, you can see that the, the new home of West Ham at the Olympic Stadium on the River Lee, they've just moved up the river a bit, haven't they, in a way? 
from their origins. I might be wrong about that, and I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. But it does seem a bit uncanny if there's an ironworks or shipbuilding company here and another one just a little bit further along the river. The, the developers describe City Island, the City Island development, as a micro Manhattan. And when I read that, I thought, that's a bit silly, really, isn't it? I mean, why would you want to live in a micro Manhattan? Either you want to live in Manhattan or not Manhattan. Why can't it just be the City Island development? But actually, stood here now and you see the way that it is an island with the river running around it, I can see what they mean with these enormous apartment blocks. This kind of does feel like a mini Manhattan. So that's the bridge up there that we uh, will cross to go into City Island. Or mini Manhattan, I suppose making that the mini Brooklyn Bridge, I guess. There's a map which shows us the layout of City Island. The English National Ballet are based there. And we'll go through and come out to Orchard Place, into Good Luck Hope, and then out into Trinity Boy Wharf, right at the mouth of the River Lee. This is the City Island Bridge. Looking back across Canning Town Station to Canning Town itself, the epicentre of redevelopment now. I wonder what David Essex makes of all of that. Wow. This does feel really quite strange. It's a really peculiar kind of space with all these brightly coloured blocks here and you're sitting on this little kind of peninsula. It's odd. It's kind of strangely apt to be walking through this development here as we come towards the end of the walk because near the beginning of the walk we had East Village, the uh, former Athletes Village development, which when I first walked through there felt equally as kind of strange and uncanny slightly eerie and this development here has that kind of same feel I mean it's very easy to say that it feels soulless because how could it have a soul a soul has to be developed over time and people live lives here and things happen one day it will have a character and in a hundred years they'll try to redevelop it and there'll be people fighting to save it saying how it marks classic example of a early new millennium development <laughs> in the Lee Valley. Both we and the river are near the end of our journey here. The Thames is just around the corner. So we're going to continue down here, down Orchard Place, to Trinity Boy Wharf and the end of the walk. Mather's whale oil extraction, a reminder of one of the trades that took place along the Thames. I think that was on the other side of the river though, where Greenwich Peninsula is now, just through there in fact where you can see the Millennium Dome. Interesting bit of information, which tells us how Orchard Place used to be a little rural pocket here, right up until the uh, late 18th century. This is good luck, hope. 
Orchard Dry Dock. We have all these new Londons spawning along the Lee and the Thames. City constantly reinventing itself. And here we are at Trinity Boy Wharf, a place where they used to literally manufacture boys and lighthouses, or the, certainly the components for lighthouses. They were made here and then shipped around the coast of Britain. They used to just uh, train lighthouse keepers. Now it houses Gem Finer's brilliant installation Long Player. Oddly enough, I actually walked along a bit of the River Lee with Gem Finer, formerly of the Pogues. Wonderful artist. <laughs> Journey's End, where the sacred river Lee meets the Thames. A really special, magical location. And from here, the river Lee will make its way along the Thames and out to sea. It always feels really special to be here this sacred spot, the confluence of the Lee and the Thames. It's been such a really magical walk, the perfect walk for such a cold and frosty January day. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. But I wander home now. <laughs> I'm having to finish the video again using my phone because the cold has drained all the life from my batteries. But it's been a brilliant, brilliant walk. I'm so glad that I did this walk today and that I had you along for company. You've been brilliant as ever. So, as I always like to round off, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Maybe, do I think I need a new sign off for these videos? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, see you then. Stay safe, stay calm, and I'll see you on the next walk. <laughs>